Hey friends, it's Len here at 1A Auto. Today we're working on our 1996 Dodge Ram 1500 and we're going to be doing something super cool, installing some LED pod lights. Going to be super easy, I can do it and you can do it too. As always, if you need these or any other part, you can always check us out at 1AAuto.com. Thanks. Okay friends, so we have a kit. You can get a light pod, a little mounting bracket and all your stuff right here. The only problem that I have with this wiring harness is it's set up for one pod. Well, that's cool and everything, but I don't want to run a whole wiring harness, you know, two of them running straight up and down the whole truck. Why do that? So I'm going to show you something very basic. We're going to splice in another end here, and it's going to be great because then we can use two pods, one for each side of the bumper under there, and it's going to be awesome. Let's do it. All right, so let's open up this harness here. We have our battery connections, positive, negative. We don't have to tell you. The positive has a built-in fuse right here. Comes with a fuse right in it. If you need to replace it down the line, just grab it, pull it right out, replace it with another 30. We'll put that back in. Close this back up, keeps it nice and watertight. Would I say it's waterproof? No, I wouldn't, but to continue. We've got our relay. This is super important. We'll follow this down. We'll take one of them. We followed it down. We have a connector here, which is great because on this side we have a switch. If you wanted to, just squeeze this tab. You can separate this, have your switch inside your vehicle, obviously, and then you can run your wire and you don't have to worry about trying to run this through a small hole. Okay? Find the other end. All the way down here. Ta-da! We have the end that goes into the light pod port right there, okay? Like I said before, this whole wiring harness right here only comes for one light pod. Well, that's great and everything, but who wants just one light pod in the back or wherever you're putting it? Maybe you're putting it in the front or the side or you do you, boo boo, whatever. We'll set the switch aside. What we did, so we've got another one with the light pod connector on there, just like this, okay? We've got plenty of uh, wiring because we're going to go from one side of the bumper all the way over to the other. And then what we're going to do, we're going to take this wiring harness, we're going to cut into it, and I'll show you how we're going to splice in some new wires so we can have dual pods mounted into the vehicle. So I just kind of rolled it back up a little bit here just so we don't have a giant mess while we're trying to work, okay? This is much easier to deal with. What we're going to do, we're going to come down this way Maybe right about here. We don't have to go all the way super, you know, super close to the connector. Uh, we'll go right about here. I'm gonna cut it. I'm gonna use some cutters, just like that. Simple okay. razor blade. Cut away from yourself, obviously. Never cut towards yourself if you can avoid it. Grab these wires. There we are. Wire strippers. Right in here. Give it a nice little twist. Kind of like to maybe have a little bit more than that. I'll try one more time. I'm gonna go with this one. That's exactly how I want it. I'm gonna do the same to this one. Give it a little twist. Very nice. We'll set this aside and we'll continue. There we are. We'll set this one aside. Got two ready. Grab our little extension cable we have made here. Same for this one. So we're gonna take our two sets of wires that have the pod connectors, okay? We're gonna have the other set aside. We don't need that right now. We're using the pod connector ones. Black to black. Just put them right up against each other. Give them a nice little twist. Doesn't have to be anything too crazy. This is just to get them up against each other. We're going to use a connector that looks like this. It's got a single wire side and a nice big double wire side. That's going to be great because we're going to slide this right onto the double wire. Try to push it in there as far as we can. This is super important. You need to make sure that you get the metal parts of the wires down very deep inside there. It's in there as far as we can get it. Now we're just going to crimp this down right up here. a nice little crimp. Okay, 
and then give this a little tug. Sometimes with these, the inside just really isn't the best. I mean, I didn't make it, so I can't really testify to quality. I'll set that aside. Let's try something a little different. We'll go with one of these. Essentially, we're just gonna put our wires inside. They're gonna need to be a little bit shorter, I'm sure. But this just presses inside here. Just twist as you push. That's nice. I'm gonna crimp it down. Go right in the yellow there. It's important to make sure you're, um, you've got a little bit of metal on the inside there, coming up past where your crimpers are gonna be. Just gonna crimp this down. Give it a nice little tug. Ooh, yes. That's much better. You always wanna make sure you give it a tug, because if you have a loose connection there, what's gonna happen with your LEDs driving down the road? Flick, 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 flick. Okay, do the same to this one. Okay, so this wiring that goes from the front all the way up by the battery, down and under, along the frame, up along here, and all, all the way over to there, just isn't quite long enough. And that's bound to happen because you know why? Maybe they weren't really planning on people putting pods on the back of their truck, or car, or whatever you're working on, right? So we're just gonna do something very simple. We're gonna get ourselves a little bit of extension wire. We're gonna go with approximately the same gauge wires what we have, the closest we can get and we'll move along from there. All right, so we grabbed ourselves some extension wire. I'm just gonna come right over here. This wiring, it's good to notice, you've got writing on one side and then no writing on the other side. So you can pick which side you want to be positive and then just remember it. We'll go with writing, positive. Take it, put it right inside the connector, get it in there as far as you can. It's super important to make a great connection here, okay? It's gonna go right like this. Give her a nice tug. That feels great. Let's do this one. This is the plain old black wire and it's going into the negative. So we have both of our black negative wires for our pods going to the plain old black part of the extension wire. Both of our red extensions for the pod there go to the, uh, the other side. We'll just trim off this. This one. There we are. We're gonna go with something as simple as a little bit of electrical tape here. It'd be nice if you can get some shrink wrap over these. Um, if you have access to that, then that's great. For me, I'm just gonna use a little bit of electrical tape. It's something that everybody has access to. Well, I would like to think most people have access to electrical tape. I don't wanna say everybody, because how do I know? We're gonna make sure that these two split off. that off, rips very easily. Here we are. We have no exposed wire. The connector is nice and uh, covered up. It's not waterproof, it's water resistant. It is what it is. Let's continue. All right, so we have the forward end of the harness here. This is where we're gonna connect to the battery. Got our fuse and everything else. We're gonna connect it over onto the battery, bring it down and along the frame. All right, so we've got our relay. Just gonna put a wire tie through here. You could use a nut and bolt if you'd like. I just went with a wire tie just because it's something that most people have around and extra nuts and bolts. Well, maybe they've got to go to a hardware store and get some. And it's not super integral. But this is very tight. You just want it to be snug so it can't wobble around and bonk off of things. And of course, you just trim off the extra. Make sure you don't cut any other wires that are around there. And there we go. We're going to take our switch off. Just squeeze that. Pull this apart. This is gonna go inside the cab and we're gonna run this through there, like I said before. Let's put this on the seat. Let's see if I can come, let's see. I wanna go underneath these wires. Just like this. And then see if I can push it through here. There it is. Awesome. So now we're gonna get underneath the dash, inside the cab, we'll find where this is. And um, 
When it comes time to mounting the switch, it's gonna be completely your prerogative where you wanna put it inside your cab. It's your truck, you do you, boo-boo. I'm just trying to show you how to wire it up, and then you can take it from there, okay? Okay, so we're underneath the dash, and now at this point, like I said before, you can run this any way you wanna run it, all right? I'm just gonna show you. We're gonna connect this in, just like that. If you wanted to, you could take off this panel right here. There's just a couple screws, and the top part just kind of slides out. It both, um, you know, has like little prongs, pecans. Um, and you can put it up here, or over here, or get yourself a nice little bo uh, box that'll make it so, you know, you can have multiple switches. If you want to have multiple LEDs, that would be nice. But anyway, we've got our switch in here, and once it's hooked up to the battery, this will function. Okay, so we're at the negative battery terminal. We're gonna loosen up this nut using my 13. Give this a little wiggle. There we are. We'll set this aside, just like that. And now we have no battery voltage going to the truck and we can continue with our electrical installation. Come right over here and do the same to this one. Except we're not gonna remove the whole terminal. What I like to do, if I have wires like this, I like to clean them up. So I'm gonna use a tool. I'll show you what it looks like. It's available at 1AAuto.com. Let's grab that. Maybe with the, there we go. Come on. There it is. We're gonna clean this all up. So that way there we have a great area for this to connect onto. And of course it's gonna be a better area to connect onto the battery. So we've got this tool right here. It's got a little sanding disc on it. This is available at 1AAuto.com, like I said. We're just gonna clean this up. Got a nice surface there. Do the same to the other side, of course. That looks beautiful. I think the truck's gonna be extra happy about this. Hear it thanking me now. Thanks, Len. You're welcome, truck. Anything for you. Let's get this wire up on here. You can set it so it goes down and under. You can set it however you want. Um, maybe I will. Maybe I'll bring it down and under here. Might make it look a little nicer. Get that out of there. Whatever, it's following me. Oops. It's distracting me is what it's doing. Just like that, okay. We'll snug this up. Give everything a nice wiggle. Not bad. Okay, we'll come over to this side. We're gonna remove this nut as well. Just got a little snug right there at the end, of course. I'm gonna try to keep this away from the negative terminal. That way there we're not um, making a connection and then taking it back off and making it again and on and so on. Sorry, no, set that aside. All right, so let's get all this out of here. We're gonna clean all these up just like we did the other side and we'll continue. Okay, so it's time to reconnect the negative battery terminal. I'll put it right on. Try to get it down there as far as you can. That's decent. Okay, now what you need to think about when you're reconnecting wires like this is what would be the most important wire. Obviously a nice big thick wire is probably gonna be drawing a lot of energy. You want that to be as close to the terminal as you can. Let's put that there. I'm gonna go with the next biggest wire. Looks like it's this one. Just like that. You can set it however you want. You, know, you can stack them up on top of each other, facing this way, that way, whatever you wanna do. It's kinda of your prerogative. Um, let's try to get it so it goes down like that. All right, what's next? Let's do the light bar. Bring it around the battery. Awesome, put that on there. And we have this one other little squirrely wire here. What's it go to? I could chase it down and find out, but I'm not gonna worry about it right this second. So, you need to make sure that all the metal areas are touching so they all have good contact points against each other. I'm just gonna try to get this on there. All the terminal ends are nice and clean, so that's good. Okay, so this looks decent. 
bad. The terminal doesn't move around on the battery. That's super important. You need to make sure that you have a good connection. That's great. I'm just gonna put a little bit of um, silicone inside there just to help keep moisture out. It would be nice if there was some sort of maybe like a heat shrink that would fit over it, but to find a heat shrink that would fit over this big part and then a little teeny wire, I don't think that there's any heat shrink that's gonna shrink like that. So we'll just do our best and fill it in with a little bit of dielectric. For the purpose of the video, we'll just say that that's good. I can fix that up a little bit better later. All right, so we just want to test to make sure that it's going to work. So I just twisted the wires together here. I did the positive to the red, obviously, for positive, and then vice versa for the ground. We've got our little Y here that we made, right? I connected them into our pods. We're going to aim them away from the camera, and let's give them a try. You just want to make sure that your wires don't touch in case they move around. Oh, yeah. Those are super bright. That's gonna be great. So we're just gonna take these back apart. They're just twisted together, so nothing too crazy. There we are. Awesome. Make sure that these are separated. All right, so now we're just gonna run this down along the wheel well here and down along the outside of the frame of the vehicle. Okay, so we're just gonna take our wire and go right up along all this right here and we'll be sure to use some wire ties to hold it together. All right, so at this point, we're gonna have to add our extension. So we might as well do that while we can work on it down at a nice working level. So we've got our extension wire here. I'm gonna use a little bit of heat shrink. Just gonna slide it right over that so it's ready for us. Twist this up. Take our connector. This has a hole on this side and a hole on that side. Slide that right in, give it a nice couple twists there. Grab our crimper, make sure we got it in the right spot. Give it a nice squeeze. Oh. Give it a tug, yes. Let's do the same to this one. So we're gonna take the wire with the writing. We're gonna go right to our positive wire. Make sure this is twisted, it is, that looks great. Slide it in there, give it a couple little twists as you push. We're gonna crimp it in, right about there. Oh yeah, doesn't get much better than that. This one looks like it needs another twist. We're gonna make sure that we have our connector right in the middle of our heat shrink. Just give it a little squeeze so I can see where it is. You use a little mini torch here. Be careful, because of course it's a flame and it's gonna be hot. Start in the center then work your way to one end or the other. And just keep moving the flame around. It's all about heat. It's not about starting a fire or anything like that. I start in the middle just because it holds it for me and then I don't have to worry about it sliding around. Let's bring the rest of the cable up through here. Obviously, I don't want to put a tug on any of my wiring here. Okay, so now for the rest of this, it's just gonna pretty much run along the frame. Uh, so we'll be using some wire ties just to make sure that it stays where we put it. But for now, I'm just gonna kinda go like this. I'm gonna make sure it's on the right side of the leaf spring. It's gonna come up along here, up over the top of this. It's not gonna stay here, by the way. It's just where it is for now. Perfect. All right, so we're all the way out back. We've got one for one pod, and then the other one for the other pod. Perfect. So we've got our wiring pretty much where we want it. It's not completely secured yet, but it is ran. Now we're gonna get ready to start hooking up the pods. Our bumper already has a hole. If yours doesn't, or wherever it is you're mounting it to, you're gonna need to make a hole that is at least the size of this bolt. Once you have that, you can continue. So we're just gonna try to put the nut 
right onto the magnet here. Try to guide it in. It has to go above the bracket and in between those little um, fins, something like that. Take our bolt, try to see if we can get it started in. There we are, there's one. Do the same to the other side. Try to get it to lay down flat. Once it's laying down flat in the groove, the groove itself actually holds it. So that's nice. Cool. So we got this so it can move around, which is great. We can go ahead and snug these up a little bit closer, um, but we'll leave them a little bit loose so we can adjust the height where they're aiming. All right, so we're just gonna take the bolt, go right up through the bracket here, through the pad. We've got our locking washer and our nut. We're gonna go right to the top. Put the washer up on there first, of course, and then the nut. There we are. Let's get it finger tight. We're gonna go do the other side and keep it loose so we can figure out which way we want it aiming. And then we'll go ahead and snug everything up at that point. Okay, so we had a little extra wire, so I just uh, wire tied it together. Make sure it's nice and snug. Now I'm gonna take the excess and I'm gonna just bring it up to this wire that's already up inside the vehicle. And I'm gonna wire tie it right to that too, because, well, why not? The reason for that is just to keep it out of the way so it doesn't come bobbling around and, you know, cause an issue. I'll take this, and you could do whatever you want with this, just to make it so it's not gonna be, you know, um, hanging around anywhere that it could get caught. Let's see if I can go through my bumper. Right up something like that. That's pretty great. I'm gonna connect this in, okay? We've got our little thumb connector area, and then right here, matches up. Just squeeze it together, give it a nice tug. That feels good. We'll make sure that we secure this as well in one second. We're gonna come across. We're gonna do the same thing for this side. I'm gonna get this out of here. Man, I'm out of there. Come right through the hole that I have in the bumper here. Very nice. I'm gonna try to leave plenty of slack so that way there, if this, um, if I wanna move this around, I'm not gonna be putting any tugs on any wiring. I'm gonna bring this down. I'm gonna connect it the same way as I connected the other one. There it is, very cool. Now we'll just secure it to anything we can under here. If you find any uh, you know, spots in the frame that you can put a wire tie through, that would be helpful. And just make sure that you don't have any wiring hanging down where it could get caught on anything and cause a tug. So once you have this adjusted to the angle that you want it, side to side that is, you're just gonna snug this up just like that. And that makes it so it can't go twisty twist, okay? Do the same to the other side to adjust the up and down Set it to where you want it, whether you want it aiming straight at the ground for ground effects or to the front if you're working on the inside under your vehicle. Just go ahead and snug this up with the Allen tool that's provided to you. So to adjust the up and down, you're just gonna adjust this screw right here, tighten it up with the Allen tool provided. Like I said, this is once you figure out what level you want it at, okay? Very nice. Doesn't shake around. I love it. Let's do the other side. Yeah! Thanks for watching. Visit 1AAuto.com for quality auto parts shipped to your door, the place for DIY auto repair. And if you enjoyed this video, please click the subscribe button.